Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today I thought I would make a video trying to boil down, maybe dumb down a little bit because that's how I like to digest stuff. The news about all the new AMD 7000 series processors. Now, there has been a lot of leaks and a lot of stuff coming out in the press as we have uh, published it on the news on the OC3D website, which you can click through underneath. Um, but we have seen a fair bit of uh, this stuff already, but they have, all of the specs have now been confirmed. So the all new AM5 platform, 1718 pin LGA socket. New socket, new platform, sadly means that the old stuff is no longer going to be able to be upgraded with this stuff but you've had AM4 for such a long time, much longer, probably two, two and a half times longer than any of the other Intel stuff. I don't actually think that it's too bad a thing. You do need to change sockets to uh, move with newer technologies, more bandwidth, more power requirements, less power requirements. So you just have to get used to this stuff. Up to 230 watt socket power delivery. I think that should show you that we're gonna be uh, using more power or the possibilities of using more power. Um, DDR5 and P PCR Express 5 for growth, but it does work with AM4 coolers. So if you have already invested in a big Noctua cooler, for example, or an AIO, because there's some up here as well, uh, if you have already invested in those, it could just mean that you're just changing your board, your CPU, maybe your memory. Uh, other things is the first desktop PC in or PC processor, I should say, in five nanometer. It's the world's fastest gaming processor or processors for gaming and content creation, they are saying. Um, and then AM5 platform with DDR5, PCI Express 5, and again, support through to 2025 and beyond. Uh, so the fact that you are, if you do jump on this now, as you'll hear me say in a bit, you are gonna get the opportunity to stay on it for a little while. Something that has been kind of confusing though is we've got uh, a new memory overclocking profile called Expo. Now AMD Expo sounds to me like an event that they should be holding where they're um, exposing new technologies, but it's the new memory uh, thing. Now there's gonna be 15 kits available at launch and up to DDR, DDR5 6400. Weirdly though, you are going to get Expo kits and you are gonna get XMP kits, and they might both be supported. So memory is already turning into a little bit of a minefield, and it's again gonna be something that we're gonna to have to work on together to wade through what it means and what it doesn't mean. But 11% uh, game and performance uplift, they're saying low latency DDR5, um, and it's a license and royalty free memory specification. Now, when we went through this with AMD in the past, they were having to do the specifications themselves in house. And that caused a lot of delays early on when we moved into, I believe it was DDR4. Um, so this is going to be an interesting time. But the fact they've got 15 kits at launch and you can see their A-Data, Corsair, Gill, G-Skill and Kingston are listed. So things are going to be uh, very interesting. Uh, when the DDR4 stuff, I know a lot of people had issues. I personally didn't have that many issues. Whether I got lucky with the kits I had to hand, I really don't know. But it's gonna be something that we are gonna have to uh, keep an eye on and work on together. As I have said though, it's called Expo. Now the old one was called DOCP, but they are saying that there might be two different types of kits that will be supported with AMD, Expo ones are gonna be very easy and you're gonna have those that you can go for, but some of the XMP, which is an Intel technology, kits may be supported as well. I wish that we could just get to the point where you bought a memory kit and it worked rather than all this separation because that then causes confusion. And we obviously want to make the uh, end user's life easy, but we will see where this takes us as things move on, but processors now. So we knew they were going to be called 7000 series, but you're now going to be getting a 7600X, a 7700X, 7900X, and the 7950X, which pretty much mirrors the part numbers that we would have seen in the last generation. 
The Ryzen 9 7950X is going to be $699. I have not seen any GBP prices yet for those of you in Blighty wanting to spend your British beer token. So dollars is all we've got at the moment. And because of the market, that could mean that they're gonna be cheaper. It could also mean that they're gonna be more expensive. It could also mean that they'll be pound for dollar exact. But you're gonna get 16 cores and 32 threads. It's gonna be 170 watt. And you're going to get uh, L2, L3 cache, you're going to get 16 plus 64 megabyte. But the most important numbers for a lot of you is going to be, it's going to have a base clock of 4.5 gigahertz and then a boost of 5.7. Now I'm going to run all these through with you in a minute and then I'm going to talk to you about uh, IPC uplifts. I'm also going to talk to you um, uh, about single threaded performance and the impact when you put these two things together that then kind of boosts everything up an awful lot because it does look like there's going to be a healthy generational boost uh, for performance with these even though this isn't technically a whole new architecture they are saying this is kind of it's uh, 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 they've perfected what they were doing last time so you have the tick and the tock with Intel, which I've heard maybe coming back. That's kind of where they've gone with this. So next gen will be an entirely new architecture. This one is just a, a more refined and, uh, yeah, refined is the right word. It's more, more refined than three. But if this is what they've done with a the refinement, there's an, it, it does look on paper to be uh, a very exciting time coming up. The uh, Ryzen 9 7900X coming in at $549, 12 cores, 24 threads, 170 watt again. The uh, uh, cash goes down a little bit. You only get 12 plus 64 rather than 16 plus 64. And then your uh, base clock is 4.7 gigahertz. But then the boost comes down 100 megahertz, uh, down to just... Uh, 5.6. The Ryzen 7 7700X is going to be $399, 18 cores, 16 threads, and then 105 watt, and then 8 plus 32 megab uh, megabytes. But what you do get is a base of 4.5, and then the boost is 5.4. Ryzen 5 7600X, $299, probably going to be the one that the majority of you are actually going to be looking at as a possible purchase for a sensibly priced gaming rig. That's $299, six cores, 12 threads, base clock of 4.7, boost clock of 5.3, 105 watts, eight plus 32. Now they do say that, uh, or they say AMD claims that the Ryzen 5 7600X can beat a 12900K in gaming by about 5% on average. Matching it, marginally beating it, at that kind of price point, I think is uh, rather large news uh, anyway. Um, uh, one of the things that we do need to remember though, to state fairly early on in the video, is this is going to be a new socket. So your old boards are not going to be supported. So if you are wanting to invest in this, then you could say now would be a good time because they are saying this socket is going to be supported up to at least 2025. So you're probably going to get a couple of a uh, uh, couple of chances to even upgrade your CPU over that uh, period, uh, but the socket is still going to be supported. So I'm not saying early on is the best time to jump on the bandwagon, but at least you know if you were to spend your money early on that the platform is actually going to live for quite a while and I think AM4 has uh, pretty much proven that and they've definitely got a better track record than Intel swapping all the time. Um, they're saying a 13% IPC uplift with Zen 4 with Zen 4 and frequencies are obviously up to 5.7 gigahertz um, and on the Ryzen 9 7950 X, that's an 800 megahertz boost. Um, but it could be interesting times. It also makes me wonder whether uh, we are going to be able to overclock these really healthily as well. Because it does sound 
like there's a lot of room in there for tweaking. So this could be very good for me in the future to be able to do overclocking guides and performance guides and stuff. So uh, all of these little things that they're saying actually genuinely make me quite excited. Um, the higher frequencies and the IPC can deliver up to 29% better single threaded performance. So that's a rather large number as well, because obviously there's quite a lot of cores. So if your cores are all running 29% better, then overall the scores, there's gonna be a huge uplift in the overall scores when we start talking multi-threaded. Um, one thing I did wanna say is it does look like there is going to be strong gaming performance. And that's even before we start talking about Vcache, because they haven't really said too much about Vcache yet other than servers. But it's, it, you haven't really got to kind of set your imagination much off down the line to pretty much assume that they will be coming at a later date. They'll, they'll get the first wave of these out and then I think we'll probably be maybe talking about Vcash uh, maybe in early 2023. Um, so one of the things I did want to also talk about is the difference between the 5950X and the 7950X. Uh, and they did have a really nice slide for that when you put them side by side and you can see the generational leaps just with that processor. And the great bit about this is it does give you uh, a lot of benchmarks. But one of the things to remember is the uh, overall benchmarks really do work differently um, and will be affected differently, which the IPC uplift uh, graph shows. So if you wanted to pick into that, then you can go in and uh, pick around. And as you can see, there's from 1% difference. I think uh, Cinebench was 9%, uh, but then you can get up to a 39% difference based purely on IPC, because uh, I believe they fixed it to uh, four gigahertz for that. Something that we did notice, which we thought could mean amazing things for mobile gaming, and by mobile gaming, I mean uh, laptops more than anything else, was uh, the lower power percentage and then the uh, extra performance. So they're saying it uses 62% less power, but there's 49% more performance. And if that then translates into laptop stroke mob mobile performance, it could actually mean that they are going to take some huge leaps forward for... Uh, mobile gaming, which for those of you out there that uh, are students or work away a lot, um, or maybe are just uh, limited on room and need to move your system around a lot, that is something that could be very, very exciting for you guys uh, in the future. So we do know that there are going to be uh, X670 boards and then X670 E boards, uh, which means there is going to be a difference in it. It's more than likely going to be a difference with PCI Express 5. But more importantly, I think, personally, was the fact that they are going to have B650 and B650 Extreme boards. So effectively, what you'll get the opportunity of having is a cheaper board that will still overclock. Uh, if you have the Extreme board, you'll get PCI Express 5 slot and a PCI Express 5 NVMe slot. Whereas with B650, normal boards there will be uh it will be a choice and it's literally going to be down to the the vendor or the manufacturer however you would like to put it and they will get to choose whether they want to have an nvme slot or a pcr express 5 slot to make things even more confusing though you may end up being uh, at put at a point where they're both on there but you have to choose so this is going to be something with the um the systems and like when the boards come through you are actually going to have to be careful and look at the way the boards are laid out the block diagrams and just be very clear that you understand <clears throat> and that's going to be something that i'm going to need to do when i'm doing the boards and reviewing the boards for you guys is draw attention to these facts because these small things could make a big difference to your um, your usage and your experience with these boards and the, the kind of performance that you're going to get out of stuff and so that is going to be something that we're all going to have to be uh, very focused on making sure we pick up. It's already something that I know that I'm going to have to change, chase the vendors for, get the block diagrams for, 
make sure that I know why they've done it and also pick between the boards to see which ones uh, are going to be good and which ones are going to be bad. Uh, and I say bad, but it's more so that we understand exactly what's on there and it's going to make comparisons very interesting, let's put it that way, because if you end up getting uh, a very expensive uh, B650 board which overlaps, uh, let's say we had a B650 board from Asus but that then overlapped a B650 Extreme from another brand uh, and then you're just at that, it's those crossover points that we're going to have to be very clear from because obviously with Asus you get um, you go up into the extremes and sorry like with the rocks and stuff like that so the way that they uh, place all these products in the lineup is actually going to be uh, quite critical it's already making me think about making different graphs and stuff to try and make things a little bit easier for you or even tick graphs so that we know exactly where we are so we can find stuff kind of easy so uh, Yes, I know I've spoken a lot about the stuff that everybody else is going to have done, but I've been trying to uh, make it in a way that you can see that things could be great for the industry moving forward. And not just because this becomes from uh, AMD, but because it's bringing competition back. You can see that everyone's uh, buzzing about it. We know that we're going to have some new stuff from the blue team coming soon. But I, for one, am very, very excited to uh, hopefully be reviewing the Zen 4 stuff in the not too distant future. Uh, you have to go careful with wording and uh, NDAs and all that sort of stuff. So we, we say hope because that's generally what we do do, we hope. And that's because I personally want to get busy again because it does feel like we've stagnated, especially over the last six months. So I think for the industry as a whole, it's going to be a really good thing to get some excitement back, get some new products flowing, get the... Um, products out there tested and in the wild so that you guys for once have to you've got the choice of having a choice rather than buying hardware just because you've managed to find one on the shelf and that's something that I didn't particularly like over the last 12 to 18 months um, but anyway it has been uh, Zen 4 we have got the 7000 series uh, launch imminently can't be too far away now that they finally announced it can it so uh, stay tuned and I will be back with more for you as soon as I possibly can do. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, leave comments because I read them all. Uh, but also check out the socials, Tiny Tom Logan on Facebook, Tiny Tom Logan on Instagram and on Twitter and OC3D everywhere else. So if you would like to go and take a look, I would very much appreciate it. But for now, at least this has been the tiniest one with another video for you out. Ding! Love you, sis.